I really, I really love nutmeg. I put a lot on like, you see that? Yeah. So how did nutmeg come into the eggnog mix? Because eggnog was actually invented in the 17th century in Europe. But nutmeg is a Caribbean thing, isn't it? Oh no, they had it in Indonesia too, remember? It was like part of the spice trade. Eggnog's really interesting. It's the most disgusting concoction you can think of, really. Although it tastes delicious. It's made out of raw egg and milk. Now we have nutmeg on our eggnog. Cheers. Cheers. This has got rum in it. So, did you guys watch the video to the end last time? Did you catch that exuberant bouncing? We have a small surprise. How many passports are in there? Three passports. Okay, so you just gotta open one. Oh, there's a letter. Uh-oh. <laughs> Did we get one? Tourist visa, single entry. We're going to Thailand, guys. High five, Ben. <laughs> Get in this with me. We're going to Thailand. I can't believe this. We're going back to Thailand. And um, we're going to be there January 8th after I book flights and hotels and everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you. Okay. okay. It's been a long, long time since we've been home, over a year now, and uh, we're in possession of our Thai visas, our COE, our ASQ, our PCR. PC, <laughs> PCR test. We have a mountain of paperwork, but we're allowed back into Thailand and we're flying out at the beginning of January. Yeah, I can't wait. Woo! Oh, woo, is right. It's funny because you think you're ready to go and you kind of sort of are preparing for this in eventuality. But I, I didn't really believe that it would happen. And all of a sudden we're going, like it happens super quick. We put our visas in, we got them back a week later and we're going. And all of a sudden we're booked for like first week in Jan. And I'm like, woo, okay, here we go. Where are we going? Where are we going? We're going towards Africa. <laughs> so we've had a lot of discussion and there's a lot of, um, there's been a lot of debate between us too about whether we go to the med or whether we go to south africa and we have decided for the the broader spectrum of the route we would actually prefer to go around the cape um two way two reasons one is piracy although i think there's ways to mitigate that risk um and it seems like a lot of people are making it safely through um the Red Sea. The Red Sea. We want to see like Madagascar. We want to see. I want to see Chagos. Africa. We want to see Africa. Safari. I've always wanted to go on I'm safari. I'm just curious about the culture there. I've not traveled to Africa before ever in my life, so I think we're in for a bit of a treat. Never been to Madagascar. Never been to Tanzania, Kenya, Mozambique. There's a lot of unrest in some of these places. Um, there were some. We won't talk about it. It'll probably make our parents nervous. <laughs> <laughs> But our, our general idea, if you want to talk, let's talk route. Like let's, so where exactly we're we gonna hit? Let's talk about the route. So after we do a bit of work to Nahoa, we're gonna head out of Thailand. Uh, we're gonna head to the Maldives. Maldives? I never know how to say that. Then we're gonna head to Chagos. Fingers crossed, we have to get permits. We've got a few logistical problems that we have to deal with there. And then hopefully, we'll, after that, we'll head up to the Seychelles and then maybe across to Kenya. Apparently you don't go further north than Kenya and even some parts of Kenya you don't even go that far north in. Then we're gonna hit hopefully Tanzania, definitely Madagascar, hopefully it opens up and then over uh, to South Africa. Let's be honest, 2020 has been hard. I think it's time to get real and reflect on what actually happened because oftentimes we go so fast through life that we never actually look back. So we've been in Canada an entire year. I can't believe it. Totally unexpected, but not totally unexpected, really. I mean, 2020 has had its amazing moments for us. We had Willa, it was insane. The <laughs> <laughs> yawn. Our winter started off awesome. Ben came home from Thailand and he was like, 
telling me about this virus that was going off in China. And I was like, oh, whatever, I'm pregnant and let's just like, it's, it was all about having this baby. Um, Literally, I was surfing Twitter for the hashtag Wuhan and it was going off. Like it was crazy and the news wasn't picking it up. Like I was on this in January, I think. Yeah. I was buying masks and gloves and shit in January. Not to pat myself on the back, it's just, it was a crazy year. Yeah, and don't, we did not stock up on toilet paper. We were not those people, but we did happen to go shopping before everything shut down here because Ben had been paying attention to it and we kind of anticipated this happening. Meanwhile, we'd had a baby, like it was crazy. I mean, what a crazy year. This is an epic, like, let's talk, take COVID off the table. This would have been a crazy year for us anyway. We had this little blob of goo that was all of a sudden ours and it's crazy how much he loved those little things. And we were so, so thrilled and also so challenged. Like, not in a way, like we still carted her all over Hell's Half Acre in that first time. We lived in, we, we lived in an apartment. We spent a bunch of time at this family ski cabin. The ski mountain was shut down, so it was just us up there, which is kind of eerie in a weird way, but kind of fine, given that we had a newborn and really didn't care to see anyone because all we were doing was Sleeping, feeding, sleeping, pooping, <laughs> puking, sleeping. <laughs> and grandparents didn't get to see the baby. That was a whole one of the huge points of coming home was to be around family to have that support. And it totally just wasn't there. In hindsight, it was okay. Like we did, we did absolutely wonderfully, and I'm really happy we had that time. It was a beautiful time to have with the baby, and to actually not be wanting to go out and do really? things was kind of a neat thing. You didn't, yeah. you weren't expected to, you weren't allowed to. The entire world had shut down two weeks after we had Willa. The the restaurants were closed, the, the stores were closed. It was like all you could do was go to Walmart and the grocery store. Like it was crazy. So we didn't really mind. No, it was fine. We were being introverts anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of got us through winter, our, our little introverted daughter. We had a lot of ups and downs there. I mean, it's a lot of like, being a parent for the first time, it's, it was a lot harder, I think, than I expected. I don't know what I expected. I mean, there was a lot of things about it that were a lot harder than I expected, but also easier than I expected. I think the easy part was dealing with Willa, like changing her diaper, feeding her, doing all that, that was fine. I think the harder part is the thing that happens to the first time parents as they grow to become a parent from a single person. I think that is a big transition that changes you and it takes some months. And Do you think it's harder as a husband? Like the guy in the relationship? Like the man? I don't think you can qualify if it's harder for the man or the woman. The woman goes through more physical stuff and similar mental stuff and then the male goes through mental stuff as well. You, everyone who's had a baby, you are all amazing. And I had no idea how amazing you were until you do it yourself. And it's something you don't actually, I was like, yeah, I totally get it. It's totally hard and everyone's amazing. But no, really, now I actually get it. So thank you for, or I guess thank Willow, or I don't have no idea. We can just cut that part. <laughs> but yeah, holy smokes. I think what I want to say is it's interesting when you actually stop and look back and actually write down a list of what happened in 2020 and like what emotions you went through and what challenges you went through personally and then actually i don't know give some credit to that and give some attention to that because right now we're looking at 2021 already as we do uh because we're like because we're going home hello but, <laughs> but that brushes all of that past trauma and challenges and lessons under the carpet and i think those are very valuable experiences and lessons that we did have. Like, wash your hands a lot more? <laughs> <laughs> because that's like an invaluable lesson of 2020. Let me just scratch my face here. <laughs> Don't touch your eyeballs. Don't touch your face. Don't touch anything. Wear gloves. Wash your hands. <laughs> or don't wear gloves, but yeah, wear masks. Like I'm the most obnoxious person on earth now. Anyone who comes near us or into our apartment ever, I'm like, can you wash your hands? <laughs> like, I don't even say hi, I'm like, can you wash your hands? <laughs> like don't touch anything in my house, just wash your hands. It's, it's a crazy world we live in, but we made it through winter in Canada, like holy shit. Yeah, in and, and Canada, it's been actually a blessing in disguise being home because we've been able to explore a lot of the BC coastline, a lot of Western Canada, 
I mean, we went on a freaking road trip. Like, that was amazing. Uh, yeah. We got to explore some of the interior of our province and, and the beautiful Rocky Mountains. Um, we got to go camping, uh, and, like, swimming turquoise blue lakes. I mean, that's cold. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I do feel better. <laughs> I don't think that really cleaned me off. I wasn't in there long enough. Oh, but it wakes you up. <laughs> I guess what I'm saying, there's opportunity in every challenge or every roadblock that comes along the way. There's opportunity there. And you know, it's, it's up to you to take it or not. The tiny, the tiny boat allowed us to go and explore and see things we wouldn't have otherwise got to see. And it was really, really cool to have that opportunity. But I think that it's probably better to spend just like a couple weeks on the boat and then go do something else for a couple weeks. Let, yeah. me, let me put it this way. We really look forward to getting back to our catamaran. <laughs> we really look forward to our catamaran. <laughs> it is a nice boat. I don't think we'll ever take for granted how nice Nahoa is now going forward. So what are some words that come to mind about 2020? Fast. It was very fast. I don't know. I mean, we've done spring, summer, fall, now we're back in winter. That was fast, man. Yeah, it's crazy. What else? Completely uncertain. This has probably been our most uncertain year. And I know I spoke to this before, but it really was hard for me. Like the uncertainty of this year has been hard for me. I think uncertainty you can equate with actual mental pain. Like there's anxiety. a anxiety. There's a pain associated with anxiety or or uncertainty and uncertainty. And I think that hit us hard this fall when we didn't know if we were gonna get back to our boat Nahoa in Thailand. There was a lot of pain this fall, a lot of anxiety, a lot of sitting around researching, going in circles. Calling embassies and they literally picked up the phone and then hung up a gate and we're like Hmm. Hello? Hello? Oh, There's you're someone crushed. there though. <laughs> <laughs> you're just crushed. Not to complain, but I think that uncertainty and anxiety goes for everyone out there. Everyone that dealt with this pandemic this year. Which We're, is the entire world. Except for those on the moon. No one lives there yet. Oh, the Mars. space station. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we on Mars yet? <laughs> no. <laughs> I think we should all give ourselves a pat on the back for that one. Just yeah. the pain, the mental anguish we endured this year. Can I get mine? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but it hasn't been easy for anyone. And we're really grateful for all the opportunities we've had this year in Canada. And it's been, I think, better than we could have ever expected and also harder than we ever expected. I think what carried me through for a lot of it was remembering some of the places we'd visited and just imagining how how their life has changed even more drastically than ours. And these people were living in shacks, in huts. Sometimes they were living on the dirt floor with just a grass mat. And you know, you just kind of put things into perspective of, you look around like, we have a freaking Christmas tree. We have electricity. We are drinking rum and eggnog and beer, you know? Like it it's, kind of puts things a little bit more into perspective, for me at least. So here we, we find ourselves sitting in front of a Christmas tree it's been winter, it's been spring, it's been summer, it's been fall, it's been winter again. And, uh, and we're going to take you along on some pretty epic, amazing journeys for 2021. We're so excited to get back. We're so excited to cross the Indian Ocean. But yeah, we're there. It's insane. I can't believe, I can't believe we're going. Um, it's, um, I can't believe we're going. It is absolutely insane right now. We'll take you next week a bit behind the scenes of all the stuff we've been getting done. It's been t total GTD mode. There's hundreds of sticky notes on the wall. Uh, it's like checking off everything that we kind of left to the last minute because we were never sure that we were actually gonna leave. Yeah. And we're going, man. Yep. Can you believe it? It's real. No. Hold <laughs> on, I gotta take a, I gotta take a drink. All right. We gotta end this on a good note. Redo. <laughs> <laughs> we have so much to do to get ready. We have boat parts to order. We have bags to pack. We have places to move out from. I don't even know. Insurance. Uh, uh, bah, bah. <laughs> My brain is overloaded. But um, thank you for following our journey. Thank you for sticking with us this last year. 
It's not been our regular normal programming, but that's about to change. Okay, goodbye, people. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> Merry Christmas, happy holidays. We hope you have a wonderful time. Mm -hmm.